Hey, it's Rosa59 here to show you guys how to make this kid's steps tool, or adults can use it too, of course. And you can download a free set of plants. You want to go ahead and grab your wood, which I am using spruce, a 2x10, and which is roughly in width, I think it's about 9, 9 and 8 or something like that. And you want to go ahead and cut out your template and punch the holes in at the top. Now for the bottom, um, if you had a bandsaw or even a jigsaw, you can go ahead and cut it out. Um, but because I have a hole saw that is 4 inches in a circle, I'm going to be using it that way with my drill. Uh, so that's why I put a little mark at the bottom. If you are going to be using this method, you can go ahead and just punch in your hole at the bottom. When you're drilling, just a quick tip is that you don't want to go all the way through just because you don't want to get chip out. So the best thing to do is with this is to get as far as you can and the way of knowing that is, is on the other side here you can see the hole already that's there. Then you know you, you're pretty close to the other side. That way then when you go through you won't get a whole bunch of tear out or chip out. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this up. ahead and cut them down. I just cut them just a little bit bigger than what they are and I put them on top of each other to make sure that they're all nice and square and all nice and flush with each other and now I'm just going to go ahead and cut them so that they're both exactly the same length. For the top, you want to go ahead and take your template and then take your center punch and go ahead and once you've got everything lined up and go ahead and center punch your marks. pre-drill uh, with a 1 8 inch uh, bit and you want to do that to both pieces and you want to go all the way through to the back side. Now you're ready to pre-drill for your button plugs uh, that are 3 8 uh, inch uh, in diameter and so I'm just going to take my bit here and then just drill and I just have some tape here and that's just the depth. That's just the depth that uh, the plug will fit in. You can always do a test fit if you find if it's not 100% flush, then just go a little bit deeper until it's completely flush. For joining the two sides and the middle piece, I just use my fence on my table saw just to keep everything nice and lined up and square. And I just held the clamp in position just a little bit nice and snug, that way I could still move and line up uh, the pieces so that they're all nice and square and even and in the middle. And I just pre-drilled one eighth all the way through a little bit and then placed one screw at the top and did the same thing on the other side. Now I can go ahead and take off the clamps. I'm ready to drive in the screw with my impact driver and I'm just using a number eight screw by two and a half inches long. And there we go, and now I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the screws in. You want to take your 1 8 inch drill bit and you want to go ahead and drill all the way through on the mark. So this is the bottom here. And now you want to go ahead and drill on top with the 3 8 bit.
Before you put the top together, you wanna make sure that everything is nice and smooth and sanded on the bottom piece of the top. And just round over the edges a little bit with some sandpaper just to make it nice and smooth. I do suggest though, before you put this together to pre-sand everything, um, cause it is a little bit more easier. But because I'm doing mine a little more rustic uh, look, I wanted to keep some of the nicks and stuff like that. All I did was use 150 grit sandpaper and just smooth it down just so those nicks are not sharp or anything like that. And especially in the area here where the hole saw got it was a little bit rough, uh, but just sanded it down nice and smooth. In the top, I just used some Gorilla Glue and I put down some down in the middle and on the two side pieces right where the screws are going. And I just use a small clamp here with a scrap piece of wood. That way I don't damage my actual surface. Clamped it down, made sure everything was all lined up. And a tip that might help you is I just measured out on the scrap piece a half inch um, over and then I just used it to on the side to go around all the way around to make sure that they were half inch overhangs on each side. And I'm just attaching um, my last screw which is number eight by two and a half inch screws. I used my handheld router and used a three eighths round over bit and I just went ahead and I did that along just the top edges and I just find that it just gives it a little bit more decorative look. To add the caps on I'm just going to use some Gorilla wood glue and I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit in here. If you have a small brush you can use a brush to get on the sides but my baby finger fits in quite well. So I just spread the glue around just enough so it's got a good something to grab onto. And then you can go ahead and push it in. If it quite doesn't go in all the way, I find just using a hammer, giving it a couple of taps, it just goes nice and smooth in there. For the top, I'm just using a small 3 8 dowel and I just cut it in half. That way I am able to use one and then the other one will go in here as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put just a little dab of glue in here. And then just using my finger to get all in the corners and then just push it down in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for eight hours. For removing the dowels, we're using a saw here that's got a lot of flex in it. And what you wanna do is you just wanna hold it nice and down flat and then just hold your workpiece down and just start to saw it off. I took my orbital sander with 150 grit sandpaper, sanded the dowel nice and flush with the top, then I went ahead and took my orbital sander with 320 grit sandpaper and sanded the top nice and smooth. Just use the photo transferring uh, method on transferring your image onto wood with uh, gel medium and you can take a look at the scripture link below for how to video on that that I've done before just for adding the paint I just use rust-oleum painters touch and a gloss finish and just in a green color I applied one coat let it dry overnight then the next day I just sanded it with 150 grit sandpaper and 80 grit sandpaper to give it that rustic look I went ahead and applied three coats of Varthane floor uh, finish and a satin finish I recommend uh, using a floor finish just because this is a stool so it is going to get wear and tear over time on it so you just want to make sure you've got a good top coat on it to protect it. Thanks for stopping by my channel and go to the video description link below for free plants. Don't forget to comment on this video. If you would like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.